Hi everyone, this is Ramalinga Prasad Kupa. Welcome to my channel, Pharma World. Today's topic is Statistical Tools for Pharmaceutical Manufacturing. Accurate data evaluation in production, quality control, and other areas of pharmaceutical manufacturing is very important aspect to evaluate performance of the product and will focus on any improvements required. Just jotting down the data in an Excel sheet does not mean anything. Evaluation means it is through statistical evaluation tools. There are several tools and charts for the purpose. Let us discuss a few important and useful tools in this video. Data evaluation. Data evaluation is a very important component of pharmaceutical manufacturing to check the performance of the product to meet the specifications throughout the shelf life. The purpose of data evaluation is to check the performance of the product during the entire shelf life. As per section 2.5, subsections 2.50 and 2.51 of ICHQ7, it is required that the data pertaining to the product API should be evaluated with an objective of verifying the consistency of the process. For API manufacturing, these sections 2.50 and 2.51 will specify what kind of data is required to be captured and evaluated. 21 CFR Part 211.180 E also prescribes similar conditions for the manufacturing of dosage forms or medicinal products. For dosage forms, this is the relevant section for data evaluation. Dosage forms are also called as medicinal products in certain zones. Statistical tools mean or average is a measure for the central tendency of the data points. Let us briefly understand certain statistical tools. This is a basic requirement. This is computed by the formula mean is equal to sum of all individual values divided by n where xi is the individual data value and n is the total number of data points. This is a simple calculation. Sum up all the data values and divide with the total number of data points. You get the average or mean value. Standard deviation is a measure of amount of variability of the data. This is another tool. This provides the variance or data spread over the central value. It is computed very easily. Take the average value of the, of the entire data. Subtract average from each value. You may get some negative values too. Square individually. Sum up all squared numbers. Then divide, divide by n minus 1. The square root of the resultant will be your standard deviation. Just for fun, you can take a small amount of data points and calculate the standard deviation. Routinely, you don't have to worry too much about this calculation. Your Excel spreadsheet will help you to do this within a fraction of a second. Check manual calculation and compare with the result obtained in the Excel sheet. It is fun. You will see the same value in both the cases. The standard deviation is expressed as absolute value for variance in data 
in the same unit of measure. I hope that the formula given here is understood well. When the value is multiplied by 100 and divided by the average value, you get percent standard deviation, which is also called RSD. This is computed by the formula sigma is equal to sum of the x and x bar divided by n minus 1 and the entire value, the resultant value is square rooted. Also, in this case, lower the RSD values, lesser the variance and higher the RSD values, more the variance that is the data spread over the central value. Another measure of variance is called range. Range is the difference between the largest value in the entire data and the smallest value in the same data. Range also gives the data on variance. This is a simple calculation. Range is computed as R is equal to X maximum minus X minimum. The difference between the X maximum and X minimum is considered as range. A simple control chart with upper control limit UCL and lower control limit LCL against the central line or mean value CL will establish whether the data is within the limits. For developing control charts, it is necessary to have these CL, UCL and LCL. Usually the UCL and LCL are set at plus or minus 3 sigma from the average value. Plus or minus 3 sigma means 99.74% of the data is captured within this range. So the UCL and LCL are computed by this approach. Types of control charts. X bar charts are mean charts. It is used to monitor the changes in the average of a set of data points. The X bar chart takes into consideration the average value of a defined set points. Generally, four or five observations are collected in consecutive succession and its average is calculated. This is the basis for developing this type of chart. It is computed as x double bar is equal to x1 bar plus x2 bar plus x3 bar plus x4 bar divided by 4 where x double bar is the average value of 4 consecutive sample means taken and x1 bar, x2 bar, x3 bar and x4 bar are average of each set. In this example, x double bar indicates the average of individual average obtained from a small set of consecutive values. In this example, four sets with a total of 16 points are considered. For each four points, an average is computed. This is called X bar. For 16 points, obviously, you get four X bar values. The average of all these four X bar values will give you the X double bar value. UCL and LCL are computed as UCL is equal to X double bar plus Z sigma X bar and LCL is equal to X double bar minus Z sigma 
x bar where z is 2 for 95.44 percent confidence and 3 for 99.74 percent confidence now ucl and lcl are computed see the gaussian curve for normal distribution you get 99.74 percent for three sigma and 95.44 percent for two sigma this type of x bar chart is used to monitor the changes in the mean of a process but this type of chart cannot identify the central tendency of the process the drift from the process center cannot be determined by this chart for this we need another type of chart called r chart let us see and in this example sigma is the standard deviation r chart depicts the shift in the central tendency so the central tendency can be determined by this type of chart cl ucl and lcl in this chart are derived from the following formula here also it is necessary to compute cl ucl and lcl to develop a chart cl is average range from each set of four samples that is r bar as in the case of x bar chart here also the difference between the largest value and the smallest value is computed this is called the range denoted by the letter r average of all r's will give you r bar ucl is equal to d4 multiplied by r bar lcl is equal to d3 multiplied by r bar where d3 value is 0 and d4 value is 2.28 these factors are statistically derived for three sigma control limits these are statistically derived factors and will not be discussed more on this video. You can browse the internet for these values. These two types of charts are very useful for evaluation of the data for changes in the process and the central tendency. There are other types of charts. E chart c chart that are very useful for monitoring the attributes attributes means discrete values like order color taste and requires a single decision no specific measurements with numeric p charts measure the proportion of the defectives in a sample set and c charts measure the actual number of defects in a sample since these are useful for attributes and many pharmaceutical manufacturing data is in numeric these are also not discussed in detail in this video let us understand what is process capability Process capability is the ability of a production process to meet the product specifications. So far, we discussed ways of monitoring the production process through X bar charts and R charts to ensure that the process is in state of control and that there are no assignable causes of variation in data. Process capability involves evaluating process variability against the preset product specifications in order to determine whether the process is capable of producing an acceptable product 
within the acceptable tolerances. Let us consider this aspect and try to understand. Process capability can be established by process capability index termed as CP. The index is a numerical value. This is derived by a formula. Process capability can be derived from the following equation. CP is equal to specification width divided by process width. The formula is upper specification limit minus the lower specification limit divided by 6 sigma. Specification width means difference between the maximum limit and the minimum limit of the product. Process width means how the process is behaving. This is calculated as 6 times the standard deviation. So the CP is fraction of difference between USL and LSL and 6 times the standard deviation. Let us see how the data is evaluated based on the capability index. There are three possibilities for the process capability index CP. They are CP is equal to 1. In this case, the process just meets the requirement minimally capable. When CP is equal to 1, the process minimally meets the requirement and the entire population will be within the process width. CP is equal to less than 1. In this case, the process is not capable. The process should be improved. When CP is less than 1, the process has more spread beyond the process width. That is the specification limits. That means the process has to be improved. CP is equal to more than 1. In this case, the process is tighter, narrower than the specifications. The, the process exceeds the minimal capability. When CP is more than 1, the process is narrower and the entire population will be much below the actual process width. CP will establish the process capability, but it assumes that the process variability is centered on the specification limits. This is the defect in this index. It will not be able to establish whether or not the data is centered. CPK is another valuable tool to establish whether or not the process is centered around the mean of the specifications. So CPK is another index that determines whether the process is centered on the average of the process width. CPK is computed as follows. CPK is minimum of USL minus mu divided by 3 sigma and mu minus LSL divided by 3 sigma where sigma is the standard deviation and mu is the average value of the process data. CPK is calculated as the minimum of these two values. If the minimum value is less than 1, that means the process is not capable of producing the product in the center mean point. So the CPK value should be more than 1. Let us also understand on 6 sigma approach briefly. As per the normal Gaussian distribution curve, plus or minus 3 sigma captures 99.74% of the population. But there is still 0.26% which is outside the random errors. It is significantly large amount of data. 0.26 
will be 2600 ppm which is really a large number even though 99.74 percent data is within plus or minus three sigma there is a random type one error which is equals to 2600 ppm this range of failure can be significantly higher than acceptable if it is six sigma 99.99966 percent of the population is within the curve and 0.00034 percent is the residual that is 3.4 ppm which is very small number to have a very high level quality plus or minus six sigma would give you a very small error of about 3.4 ppm only i hope that this brief introduction into specific statistical tools that are useful for pharmaceutical manufacturing is understood well try out these tools for evaluating the results of process this gives a good insight into the investigations and design kappa for improvements to sustain manufacturing of good quality product thanks for watching for more videos please do subscribe like and share also please leave a message in the comments box for any further support thank you